We all know Pac-Man. It is ubiquitous with iconic classic video game franchises. When you think old school video games, you think Pac-Man. Even for kids who have never played a video game before, Pac-Man is iconic for the industry. Everyone knows what Pac-Man is. So the fact that there is a kid out there who grew up playing Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures, as their first Pac-Man game should be a, a joke, right? It should be something that couldn't actually happen, would never actually happen, but it did. I was that kid. I grew up with Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures, and I have quite a lot to say about it. So for the benefit for those of you who I'm sure have never heard of this game before, I did a quick gameplay session where I uh, actually showcased some of the game's unique aspects and features. And if nothing else, uh, for better or for worse, and <laughs> uh, that is that is an interesting uh, usage of, of the word, for better or worse, this game is very, very unique. It's very distinct. There's really nothing else like it. And the baffling thing is, in a lot of ways, this is probably my favorite Pac-Man game because it's incredibly creative. It sticks out in my mind and is honestly probably one of my favorite games on the Super Nintendo uh, due to its great sprite work, interesting premise, and just all around uh, creativity. Most 90s platform mascot characters were, were stuck with the typical, stereotypical 2D platformer action games. You had stuff like Joe and Mac, you had Sonic the Hedgehog, you had Mario, Yoshi, uh, Wario Land was coming out around this time. Everyone was trying to be a typical 2D platformer, and Pac-Man had his stint with that too, with games like Pac and Time and some other some other releases. But uh, New Adventures, uh, Pac-Man 2, the New Adventures, decided to completely radically do something way different in which the game as you can see in the gameplay uh d chose not to be like anything else it's more like a point and click adventure game where you the player have control over sling over a slingshot with no direct control over pac-man himself like everything you see here uh see him doing on screen right now it's all automated it's all scripted like he interacts with the environment around him depending on his mood and depending on your own actions so uh, Pac-Man, in a way, is um, has no you have no he has no agency <laughs> like, like um, you basic the game really loves fucking with the uh, the fourth wall right in which uh, Pac-Man will get angry at you depending on what you do he'll be happy with you like his uh, his mood will change and his actions will drastically change depending on on what happens so you can see how like he interacts with the environment how he can run into things how he can be scared of certain objects how uh how he behaves oh. and, and you can see like the great animations you can see the great sprite work um a great slapstick comedy it's really it really sticks out in your mind as just being completely different and original but the thing is, and, and I think the thing that puts a lot of people off from this is that like this, how exactly did we go from the classic Pac-Man game of 1981 to this? You know, in about a decade, <laughs> we went from uh, running around in a maze to this like urban fantasy thing. And I think a lot of people really had strong feelings against this game at the time because of that. I myself uh, was kind of baffled by this game uh, because of the controls and because of the things you can do. I remember struggling to to figure out how to get Pac-Man to move in certain directions, how the look system worked, how how exactly he interacts with the environments, where exactly you were supposed to go, what exactly you were supposed to do. Like the mission objectives were all over the place. I actually did not beat this game until much later in life. Uh, I've got I got to the ending, so it, it's not that hard. I was just somehow like a complete dumbass and. Couldn't figure out how to get past that last door to get to the boss where all you have to do is shoot it. So I think I could have beaten it, but I never actually did for, for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, I 
I spent my time with this game, like exploring every nook and cranny. There is a lot to see in this game. You have a wide, versatile world of a lot of different environments, a lot of different things going on, and a lot of different things that that Pac-Man can inter interact with, right? So um, this this scene here with the tree, like there are several things that can happen here. Like you can fight with the dog, you can um, get Pac-Man to hit the apple down and, and like get the get the dog to bark at him and chase him away. Like you can um, do what I'm doing here, and and uh, cause Pac-Man to to slam to this door. <laughs> <laughs> like th there are so many fun in de inventive ways for Pac-Man to die in this game and uh, it would be a treat to go through the game and and try to find them all. I am uh, I'm certain that there are plenty that I missed cuz there there are a lot of weird things in this game that I, I don't think a lot of people know about. Uh there's a hidden minecart stage that's a lot of fun. Uh, not not the first one, uh, the the hidden one, which I've never actually beaten, which is which is uh fanatically uh, which is very difficult. Uh very well hidden. Hard to find, uh, obscure as fuck. Like I, I'm not even sure if it's like something that's commonly known about in the community. I've shown it off on stream a couple of times, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if this game has a community, and, and I think it's part of the reason that that makes it so interesting to me is that this game this game feels like an enigma. It feels like something that like a lot of people don't know a lot about. And it feels like uh, something that really has gone overlooked for a really, really long time. And and it's a damn shame because I thought as a kid's game, th this was a lot of fun. It, it's like a playable cartoon, all right? Once you get past the weird controls and uh, simplistic nature of the game, of, of what your your objectives are, because the game really isn't that difficult at all. Like, there's a lot of be there's a lot of fun to be had here. Lots of funny moments, lots of cool segments, and... Honestly, lots of really cool gameplay aspects. Like, um, what we're doing here with the slingshot, like, th there are so many cool things you can shoot at and interact with. Like, you can get Pac-Man to interact with this cow. Um, you have... This here is a puzzle, actually. Like, it's very difficult to um, figure this out. I I've seen people struggle with this. Like, I I've heard people tell stories about how they couldn't figure this out as a kid. It it it's so, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. You have to get Pac-Man to stand in front of the pedestal and then get the shoot the bird, uh, the crow, so it comes down and knocks it down, and then Pac-Man will will milk the cow, and then that's all you have to do. But like, it's it's kind of an elaborate puzzle, right? Like you would assume Pac-Man could just leap up and get the bottle, but but he won't do it. So it, it, the game is like filled with moments like that, where like the game wants you to do things in a very specific way. But if you don't know exactly what you're doing, it comes off like it's uh, it's convoluted. But like when you know it, you know it and you can come back later and just kind of breeze through it and just kind of like appreciate what the game is trying to do. And like I think that's how most people who criticize this game feel about it. I think most people just uh, haven't spent a lot a lot of time with this one. I feel like they're that they never gave it a shot. Honestly, if anyone shits on this game at all, um, like a lot of other obscure Nintendo games, um, I, I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's very, very unfairly criticized among those who who have played it. Oh, and this is interesting how the ghosts appear. Like, I love how this game has, this always confused me with, like, the deep lore and the, the witch ghost and, and just, like, the ramblings. Like, keep in mind, like, you saw the gameplay footage. That was unedited. Like, we, we did not encounter the ghosts at all. You have to, like, go out of, you, uh, you have to go out of your way to find the ghosts in uh, the first couple of areas. Like, they're there. Like, they do exist. But, like, if, if you know exactly what you're doing, you're not going to run into them. Which is, uh, I don't know. It, it, it makes the game feel, like... It, there's a threat in the air, but like it feels like a peaceful world, which is like a very sharp contrast to to most games like it. It's it's very very different from most games out there in that regard, and I really appreciate it. Like it, it has that Earthbound kind of feel to it, with like the urban environment with, mixed with like this bizarre fantasy aesthetic. Um, like it's still oddly enough really recognizable as Pac-Man, right? You have the character, you have like the ghosts, and and really. Funnily enough, that's really all you need. Like, he has a family in this game. Um, there's just so much to... Uh, <laughs> it It just goes to show you how, how you can make, like, radical changes to a formula 
and still be recognizable as that IP. And I think that's the lesson that I took away from this game. And it's a big reason why I, I grew up appreciating games like Star Fox Adventures and, uh, you know, Super Mario Sunshine and, uh, you know, maybe even Luigi's Mansion, right? Like, yeah, it's different from the core IP. The game, as you've seen already, has quite a few distinct environments. So, like here, we uh, we have the mountain, which comes right after the farm, which you uh, where you have to go in chapter two. And you can find uh, a couple of interesting areas here. You can find the first minecart stage to the right, which I think a lot of first players will go to first. But uh, that's not actually where you're supposed to go. That actually loops around back to where you started. I myself uh, fell for that the first time I played through this game. Um, I was I was furious. What you're actually supposed to do is get this rope climb up here and then like use this hang glider and, and this uh that goes to show you like the way this game is designed because there are so many dead ends and so many weird areas that are kind of honestly unnecessary to get through the entire game you could spend a lot of time doing something that really doesn't amount to anything right like both minecart levels in this game you can technically just avoid and, and get through it just fine like uh this hang glider level is necessary uh <laughs> That's uh that's a lot of fun to watch. I I did that on purpose. I swear. Um the first time I did it on purpose. Um but like it, it's it's interesting to see like this game is so has this appearance of being so simple and yet it has these really cool interesting hidden aspects to it. Like these cool mini games that are genuinely like a lot of fun, interesting and unique. Uh, and, and quite a bit, uh, quite a bit difficult too. You'll see, like as I as I play through this stage, that that uh, I die a few times. And I've played this like hundreds of times. I've been playing this since I was a kid, right? Um, <laughs> like uh, you have the ability to go up and down, and and to go down, you have to shoot yourself, and you have to shoot like uh, obstacles in your path. Like there are ghosts trying to mess with you and stuff like that. Like it's it's interesting to see like what they. How they took this idea and really came up with something really, really distinct with it. Uh, I think playing this stage for the first time is what really made me a fan of this, of, the, of this game, because because you really start to appreciate just like, oh yeah, th this is a game. It's not just a game where you watch Batman do stuff. Like you, you are actively involved. You are helping him like navigate obstacles. <laughs> like there is a game aspect to it, but it has a lot of variety. And honestly. Um, I found myself really wishing, uh, after I beat the game for the first time, that there was, like, a proper sequel or another game like it. And I, I really have never seen anything that even comes close. Like, I'm sure there are other adventure games out there, but none with this, like, vibe, none with this, like, uh, simplistic atmosphere, like, none with this, like, really good animation. Like, um, really, this game is kind of a, a flawed gem honestly and I, I suppose it is flawed like although i i have nothing but praise for this game i've had like countless hours of enjoyment out of it like there's so much you can do so much to see like it, it probably is um like objectively speaking not that great it, it is pretty short um it's not it's uh there aren't a lot of gameplay sections like the final boss is a joke uh the missions are short and easy if you know what you're doing like, there are a lot of things, like, objectively wrong with it, but at the same time, like, it's a game I positively love and and can't help but recommend to people. Um, out of all the Super Nintendo games that I love, I think this is probably one of the ones that's, like, the most unusual. Like, uh, the other one would probably be Congo's Caper. I think that one is kind of... Um, kind of an obscure hidden gem, too. I'll probably talk about that at some point in the future. But uh, for, for Pac-Man 2... Like this is an oddball game from an established franchise that um that I don't I don't actually care for all that much. I'm I'm honestly not that big of a Pac-Man fan, but like this game really um was something I was exposed to from a young age, and uh, I really made me appreciate the character and what Namco was doing at that time, and and really made me appreciate what gaming could be because it wasn't all about like fighting stuff like you can you can see in this gameplay like there isn't a lot of um there isn't a lot of combat there isn't a lot of like taking on like the bad guys like they exist but like for the most part pac-man is just going along his daily life like he's just a guy in this crazy world and i i kind of like that uh i kind of like that angle it's a little bit different it's a, it's a, it's a little bit distinct i uh I really appreciate that aspect of it, and I'm curious, like, if if anyone else feels the same way. Does, does anyone else love this game as much as I do? I 
personally think not. 